Peter, profitability by 2024, but in that time, revenue growth to slow. What's the big takeaway from your investor day? We've had a great investor day today. And part of that, we delivered our, one of our key messages, which is the path to profitability by the second half of 2024. We also shared our revenue growth of 45% to 55% for next year, which is solid, a solid growth as we continue to build on our platform. We're continuing to have all the right ingredients in building new product innovations, serving our customers, our drivers, as well as our merchants. And we also today shared some of the new initiatives as part of our growth strategy. We today talked about subscriptions. We talked about partnerships. We talked about digi digital banks. We also talked about our grocery also, our expansion into grocery. So, and advertising, not to mention also. So we talked a lot about where we're taking the business in the future. And we've have all the right ingredients, all the all the right foundations for us to continue to build on the power of the ecosystem, the platform here that we've created in Southeast Asia. We've seen this story around the world with ride hailing startups, delivery startups, and it's a story of operational discipline. So with your focus on profitability, how are you going to get to that goal? What actions will you take? We've taken a lot of actions. And part of that is the cost efficiency. How do, we, how do we as a business continue to lower our cost to serve, whether it's our merchants and to our drivers? And today in Investor Day, we actually talked a lot about some of the ingredients, some of the initiatives that we have actually continued to improve efficiency for our ecosystem. And that leads to a margin improvement. We also talked about how we've continued to reduce our subsidies also in the marketplace. And that leads to also profitability and margin improvement. And at the same time also, we've been very disciplined in terms of our cost structure. Right. We'll continue to optimize our cost structure. And again, that also leads to margin improvement and that path to profitability acceleration. You talked about some of the new areas that you're expanding to. Advertising is interesting, of course. How do you monetize that quickly? How do you take those new areas as a material boost to the top line? Sure. Yeah. And that's actually one of the critical part of our ecosystem, the fact that we have this marketplace that we can continue to create efficiency and monetization at the same time. And part of this is serving our merchants. We have over 4 million registered merchants on our platform, whether they're the small businesses, medium-sized businesses, or even franchise restaurants, quick service uh, conglomerates that's on our platform today. And how do we serve them better? And advertising is one of those elements that we can serve them better. We have a lot of data on our merchants. We have a lot of data on our consumers. So how do you put those two together? And we've seen very early wins in advertising. We'll be continuing to expand on that. We're continuing to develop also the technology behind that. So we feel very strongly that actually advertising as part of our future growth will benefit the ecosystem, especially our merchants today in Southeast Asia. Hey, Peter, on the ride hailing and delivery front, it looks like the competition's coming for you. You know, in key markets like Singapore, a lot of names entering the market. How do you pull off this profitability goal and defend market share at the same time? Our competition has always been intense in Southeast Asia. We acknowledge that. But we're very focused in making sure that our super app, our product, and our services continues to be one that our consumer will continue to use. And we've seen engagement. We've seen continuing interaction with our super app, our drivers also at the same time, as well as our merchants. So we're going to continue to, to be very heads down and continuing to create this ecosystem because it creates stickiness also, despite what we see around us, whether it's new competitors or existing competitors that we have. We also have one of the strongest balance sheets that we have here right. in Southeast Asia. Is there room for all these players? Do you see some consolidation happening in Southeast Asia? Hey, what about M&A? <laughs> Organic growth is very key for us. We're going to continue to be focused on growing the ecosystem. We've got all those new initiatives that we talked about, and we're going to continue to develop new products and services. 
And we're going to continue also to broaden our TAM. Our TAM is also broadening as we have these new services that uh, we're creating, things like digital banks that we never had before, advertising that we've never had before. So we'll continue to focus and just execute on organic growth. And again, part of that is making sure our super app strategy continues to flourish here in Southeast Asia. You mentioned the balance sheet. There was a time where $6 billion seemed like a lot of money. It doesn't seem like a lot of money anymore. Are you going to need to raise more capital? Are you going to be talking to your existing investors like SoftBank, like Uber? Yeah, capital allocation framework was one of the topics, actually, that we were discussing you know, during our Investor Day today. And one of the first pillar that I alluded to was cash preservation. And we're very disciplined in making sure that every penny counts and every cost in our business also is being optimized. And we will continue to be very disciplined in making sure that cash is preserved. We're very fortunate that we have one of the largest balance sheets here in Southeast Asia. And we'll continue to make sure that we deploy our capital appropriately and in the most disciplined way and making sure that our balance sheet continues to be strong with ample liquidity also. Will you tap the debt markets? We actually have a, a term loan B that we have currently that in existence. We have a 1.8 term loan B facility. And we've, that's, we've, it's been in place now for the, last, for the last two years. And it's part of our capital allocation framework. And a different capital structure works. And we're in a very good spot right now in terms of where we are with our balance sheet. And as with the future growth and also with the future free cash flow that we can generate as we get to break even in the future, we feel that our balance sheet actually will continue to be strengthened in, in the future years. Hey, I want to key in on a, on a market like Indonesia. There's great growth opportunity for you there. But again, increased competition from the likes of Gojek, for example, especially after their own merger. How are you moving to be more competitive and grow in that market? Yeah, Indonesia is one of our key markets. It has one of the biggest population in Southeast Asia. And we have a fantastic team that's operating there in, South, in, in Indonesia. So a lot of that is actually ties to what the, our, our super app and all the ecosystem that we've created. Again, in Indonesia, we treat other countries no different. Uh, we have a competitive mode, and that's how our super app has been able to drive the flywheel there, whether it's mobility, in terms of all our different services, whether it's deliveries, now as we get into also grocery deliveries and also other, other on-demand delivery uh, capabilities for our consumer base. And also now we have financial services. And actually in Indonesia, we also have, with our partner, MTech, uh, we'll be entering the digital bank space also. So again, we're going to continue to be very focused in enhancing our ecosystem. Right. We feel that's a competitive mode, and we'll continue to enhance that. Hey, Peter, to finish, give me the big picture on the economy in Southeast Asia. What, is, what are you seeing with the consumer? What are you seeing as we see COVID restrictions starting to lift, the strength of the consumer, the impacts of inflation? Sure. It actually, there's a lot of excitement here in Southeast Asia. We've been, such, we've been in the last two years in such a severe lockdowns in various parts of our countries. Tourism here just starting to flourish. We, people are starting to travel again, and people are starting to head to the airports. People are just starting to get back to the offices, and the commute is just starting to pick up. So people are dining out also and enjoying things where they couldn't before. So there's a lot of buzz. There's a lot of excitement in Southeast Asia. But we're also, at the same time, very cautious. We know in the developed markets, the macroeconomic circumstances, there's a lot of uncertainty. So we're also taking steps to make sure we guard it and we're also uh, being cautious. But overall, I would say the buzz in Southeast Asia is one of excitement also, and one of just people continuing to really uh, take advantage of where the economy is reopening.